All right. Talked it over, thought about it, gave it a good 24 hours, really sat with it. I really sat with it, y'all. I did. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't standing for it, so I sat with it. But that's not the end of there. Welcome back to Nets Republic. I'm your host, Sever the Bond. This is sort of a part two to yesterday's video. If you watch the entire thing, we were trying to come to the conclusion, looking at the standings and how it is that the Brooklyn Nets are sitting currently in this landscape of the NBA and such. Is it a situation of? Sorry. Is it a situation of the Nets are just that good? Or is the Eastern Conference trash? I'm telling y'all, I, 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 I mumbled it over, molded over, molded, molded over, really thought about it, tried to take everything into account that I possibly could. And I have to say, I've come to somewhat of a conclusion. At first, I got on here and said, it's a situation of both. The Eastern Conference is trash, and we're really good. But then I sat back on it. I sat back on it. We can't factor in Kyrie Irving being canceled, because that hasn't happened for over a month now. Kyrie's been on his best behavior. Opposite of what Drake said, and nothing was the same. He's been on his best behavior. So he hasn't been canceled. Therefore, he's been able to play with the team. He's out there with Kevin Durant, so it's not like we live and die on what Kyrie's output is, because we know if we do that, Kyrie's greatness does not equate to wins. We all know that. We've established this. We've been doing this three years now. So we all know what happens with that. So since Kyrie Irving is out there with Kevin Durant, it balances out Kyrie Irving's inability to equate to wins on his own. We all know Kevin Durant is that dude. We all know Kevin Durant handles his business. I mean, I don't know. But, you know, he, he, he is KD. He is KD. And we know him out there alone equals wins. Whether he wants to admit that or, or, or to say that out loud or not, it ill what it ill. And when you combine the two of them together, and they're both firing on all cylinders, and we've got a decent supporting cast around them, eh, eh, that's trouble for the other team. Watsonabe's playing amazing. Ben Simmons doesn't really do anything, but he's not doing anything bad. So that's, there's that. Claxton is, oh God, Claxton. We've talked about how y'all were trying to tell me that he was a secret weapon for the longest time. I just didn't understand. I was so distracted with Jared Allen. Not saying that Claxton is better than Jared Allen, but you get what I mean. Clax is doing well. Joe Harris hits a three every now and again, attempts to play defense, gets blocked every time he goes for a layup. But I mean, it's not like he's, He's, he's terrible anymore. He's, he's still doing decent. Seth Curry hits a shot if he gets to play. Patty Mills will hit a shot if he gets to play. Royce O'Neal is doing his Bruce Brown, Jeff Green, Blake Griffin type thing. Yes, I slid Blake in there, hush. Um, Markeith Morris, when he plays, he does his job. TJ Warren is doing his job, allegedly, even though y'all kind of overhyped him just a teensy bit, but he's doing his job, allegedly. Sumner is above average, definitely more than what we bargained for. We'll take it though. Cam Thomas, whenever he gets to play, is a bucket. And if there is no other options he can take over, fully capable of doing so. The team, the team is pretty good. The team is pretty good. The Eastern Conference, the Hawks are injured again, so we can take them out of the equation, but we're better than them. The Knicks are the Knicks, we're better than them statistically, and, and, and that probably won't ever change. So I'm not worried about them. I'm not worried about the Heat, even though we haven't played them yet. They're going through whatever it is that they're going through. We're better than the Heat. I don't know who needs to hear that. We're better than the Raptors. We just swept them. Thank God we don't have to play them again. Better than Detroit. Better than the Magic. Better than the Wizards. Better than the Pacers. Better than the Cavs. Yes, we are, yes, we are better than the Cavs. Don't know who needs to hear that. So with the Eastern Conference being full of such mid, is that our fault? Because that's the conclusion I was starting to come to. Is it our fault that the Eastern Conference is terrible? Can we, 
Are we to blame for that? No. No, that's not our fault. So by default, that makes us a good team. By default. Because the competition in the East is so trash. So therefore, by that logic, that means that the Brooklyn Nets are a good team. Let's look at that top shuffle. We're also better than Philly. I don't know if I brought that up. We're better than Philly. So you look at that top two. That's the Bucks. That's the Celtics. Are we in that same conversation? Not are we better than them. Are we in the same conversation? When you think top teams in the Eastern Conference, when you think that tippy top tier that's fighting to get to the finals, do you think the Brooklyn Nets? Celtics, no doubt. Milwaukee, no doubt. Brooklyn? I'm gonna say yes. Strictly based on what they've been doing over the last couple games. Now, the last time we played the Celtics, we got wrecked, but meh. I don't know if we've played Milwaukee yet, but I would like to think we are on their level. I think the chemistry has come together enough to where maybe... I think the chemistry makes up for some of the weaknesses that we have as a team. Because no team is perfect. And I think our chemistry makes up for it. I think our chemistry is something that we can hang our hats on. Our chemistry is something that we can bring to the table when we talk about what makes the Nets great. They get along. They like each other. They've been playing with each other. There haven't been significant injuries. No one's been suspended in a while. I happen to think... That even though it is by default, the Nets are a good team. I believe that we'll make it out the second round. Just based on the positioning. Just based on the positioning. If we remain in the top four of the Eastern Conference... We'll beat whoever it is in the first round easily. What about the Hornets or something like that? We'll take them out. No problem. You get to the second round. We might get lucky. We might mess around and face, I don't know, let's say the Knicks or something like that, right? Let's say we meet the Knicks in the second round. Because again, I'm thinking about the positioning of the playoffs. Let's say the Knicks are able to get past whoever it is they get past, and we see the Knicks in the second round. We're beating them. Let's say we see the Cavs in the second round. We're beating them. That means all we have to do is get past either the Celtics or Milwaukee. Because, again, numerically, if there are eight teams that make the playoffs, quick math, Five of them can't touch us. Five of them are beneath us. So that means mathematically, as long as we are in the upper echelon, in that top four tier, which I believe that by the end of the season, we will be at least the third seed. As long as we remain in that tippy top tier right there, we don't have to face anyone who is remotely on our level until the conference finals. And I truly believe that after an entire season's worth and two playoff rounds, the Nets won't lose. I believe that. I believe that. If we get that far, which I don't see why we won't, 
Because if we were like in the lower part and we were in the playing tournament and we had to face those top teams in order to get further, like last year, we had to face the Celtics right off the bat. But if we remain in the top tier, see this year, seating might matter. This year, the seating might matter. I've gone on record in the past saying it doesn't because we're good enough to win, but that was when we had a super team. This is a little bit different. This is 7-Eleven and Ben Simmons. And the, and the dogs. As long as we maintain that high seed, the other five teams can't sniff us. So mathematically, we don't have to worry about those top two teams until we get to the Eastern Conference Finals. And if we manage to get that far, you'll have to kill KD. You'll have to kill Kyrie in order for us to not get past those bums. And what about injuries? What if one of those top two teams fall off? What if Giannis twists his ankle or something like that? What if Jalen Brown, you feel me? Gets like a pinky sprain or something like that, and he can't play. And we go in and they're fully healthy with chemistry on our side. Are the Nets a good team? Or is the East just trash? I'm here to say it, the Nets are back. We're back. Our demise was greatly exaggerated. Agendas were pushed, but we're back. God dang it, we're back. Tell a friend. Inform individuals. The Nets are bike. And no one is going to stop us this time. This is it. This is the one. If they mess this up, I'll never forgive them. But the Nets have found a way to make one last chance. As long as they don't mess it up, no one gets canceled, no one gets hurt. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. The church of blow it up is closed. We'll revisit this in the summer, but for now, I'm back on board. <laughs> I'm back on board. I'm ready. I'm ready. And even if things get bad, even if things go left, I will not waver. I will not shake. I will not be besmirched upon. This is it. We're cashing it in. We don't need Harden. We don't need Karis. We got it. We don't need a trade. Nope. We can do it. I believe it. I believe we can do it. This is, the, this is the one. This is the one right here. This is the one right here. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm back. The Nets are back. Let's, let's, let's go win the championship. Let's go.